couple days. Um, so, uh, just to remind everyone, we do this the third Wednesday of every month. Um, hopefully, COVID starts to dissipate and we can have a regular full size room in here and, and invite everyone. Um, we still have seats in here, you guys. So if you guys want to drive on down, come on down. Um, those of you who don't know me, I'm Ginger. I'm with Keller Williams. That's why they let us use this room for free, which is nice. And they've supplied us with coffee, so that's even better. And um, we've been hosting this meeting for, oh gosh, it's been about six years now. And some of you guys have been with us since the very beginning. And so I am super happy that you guys continue to come. John's one of, one of the originals. And uh, he also... <laughs> <laughs> Um, he also runs a couple of groups that um, I'm going to invite you to talk about when we go around the room to introduce ourselves. And um, what we're going to do is we have a guest speaker in here that was kind of impromptu. I asked him yesterday if he would speak. He was showing me some cool stuff that he had done with the property that um, he owns. And he's actually my brother. So <laughs> he told me no at first and then he changed his mind. So I'm really happy he's here. Um, and he's all the way here from Livermore to visit with us. So um, I do encourage you guys to take a peek at um, this coming soon is a condo in um, a community right there north of the Meadowood Mall. This is one of my listings in full disclosure. It'll be available hopefully Saturday for viewing. They're renovating the bathroom um, and they're selling it for 180. Um, I do know people in there that are getting rents as high as fifteen hundred. Um, I know one owner that's getting sixteen hundred, but theirs is renovated to the nines. Um, these guys were only getting about eleven hundred on theirs, um, so I think that they were shorting themselves on the rent. Um, if you have any questions about that property, let me know. Um, unfortunately, we can't let you guys view it until Saturday because it's not officially on the market. It's coming soon. Um, and I encourage you when we guys when we go around the room for you guys to share any properties that you have or any wants or needs. So um, your name first of all, I'm Ginger Marcus. Um, why are you here? I run the meeting. Um, we've been running it for a long time. Uh, my goal from this meeting initially was to meet people just like yourselves that have similar likes and wants and needs in the real estate investing arena and learn from all of you guys. So I've learned a lot from a lot of you guys that are in the room right now, just in being in this room and then networking afterwards. I encourage you guys to stick around and exchange cards and all that kind of good stuff. Um, so we're gonna jump to John and we're gonna start with you. If you don't mind introducing yourself, what do you plan to get from the meeting and if you have any wants or needs, and then if you don't mind mentioning the meeting. That you I'm John Spinola, I'm a realtor and investor. Well, I came because Ginger invited me. What better? <laughs> but no, just to just to network. Um, I find that there's more transactions than I put together uh, from my own portfolio through networking and stuff that's not on the market or coming on the market. The condo is probably an excellent example. Something that's going to show up, but no, not a lot of people know about it. All the time. I always say you can't steal in slow motion. So if you see something, you need to do your job. Um, I have, I run a, a couple of meetings. One is for licensees only. Um, it's the second, third, second and fourth um, Thursday of the month. It's an ex we call it an exchange meeting. So we have uh, realtors we get together and I don't mean to shut you out. Yeah. <laughs> Although you've got my best side. <laughs> <laughs> um, so realtors, uh, it's pretty creative real estate. Again, stuff that isn't on the market. A lot of times pocket listings, problem solving, um, doing 1031 exchanges, tax, tax deferred exchanges. Bruce attends our meeting. 
Ginger came once in her lifetime. For <laughs> for I've been twice. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that's for licensees only. And then we have the first and um, third Thursdays. We have it's pretty much open. Um, and it's, it's a similar meeting, although it's not um, with the exchangers. We tend to disclose a lot about the buyer or the seller, rather. So, with permission, it's personal information. So, if they need to get out of a property, we disclose that. If they need, you know, if they're divorced, you know, divorce is coming through or the IRS is coming and they give us permission to give that information. Um, why are they really selling? What's the motivation? And so, we both of those were key on motivation much more than the property itself so the, the reason for for transferring a property is varied and what's a a motivation for me might be something that you could take advantage of not advantage but help you with so what else was i supposed to do um why are you here uh, networking. So somebody else may have something that I'm looking for. Um, I do mostly in um, commercial stuff now, small industrial, minor industrial, retail. Uh, don't own, own a few units. But, so, and just hope to make contact with somebody. Um, you never know who's got somebody or knows somebody who knows somebody. Awesome. And I know you're a plethora of knowledge. You've also been a speaker here with us. So thank you. So appreciate that. Yep. Uh, my name is Scott Lichert. I'm just here to kind of learn more about the local real estate market and the economy and kind of where we're headed. Awesome. Um, we'll go to the back. She's pointing at you. She's yeah. pointing at me. Yeah. Uh, my name is Brian. This is my wife, Becky. She's back here in the shadow. Um, and this is our business partner, Mark Stewart. And we, we came in mass today. Mm -hmm. And this is our good friend. <laughs> What's your name again, Marty? That's a nice thing you called me all week. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, so we've been coming here for not like two years now. Um, and just really enjoy the interaction and uh, maybe someday we'll actually get an investment property. I don't know. Uh, recently, uh, in the last six months, our timing was a little bit sketchy due to the COVID-19 stuff, but we started it before that came about. Uh, we uh, formed a company, uh, Mark and, and Becky and I, uh, Highcraft Construction and uh, got our contractor's license, so we're licensed in the state of Nevada, uh, insured and bonded and all that stuff. And it was quite, uh, quite the experience navigating all that stuff remotely mm -hmm. and not in person. So, uh, anyway, that's, uh, I don't know if there's anything <coughs> you wanted to add. I'm good, good. I'm good. good. Okay. Do, you, do you do mostly your own stuff or do you hire yourself out as a contractor? Or uh, no, we'll hire ourselves out as a contractor. Yeah, absolutely. And what we're, what can you do? Uh, we're a general uh, E2 license, so uh, we can do uh, in the, our uh, residential. Uh, you can do light commercial, very light. Very, very light. Yeah, I don't know really what is considered light commercial. Well, interior remodel. We wouldn't do anything structural, but interior remodels will have experience in. I've been in the business since I was seven years old. My grandfather was a painting contractor. I started shaping brushes at the end of the day. Um, and from there, I just got into contracting and got my license in California and then wised up and got out of there. And uh, actually went up to Idaho for a couple of years, built a house up there, and now I come back down here to Reno. Um, with the urging of Brian and Becky, said, let's get a business down here. And, I was already looking at the market and watching it. It's like, yeah, this is this is where to be. So that's what prompted everything. Of course, the COVID just put the brakes on everything. 
and I made it extremely difficult to get through the process. But we now are through the process. We're licensed, insured, we're bonded. We have liability insurance. Okay. So, so you do ground up. <coughs> we ground up. Is that what you're looking to do? We're looking to try to keep it more to uh, remodel, repair kind of stuff, not uh, not actually building ground up. You do additions, additions, additions yes. Yes. Well, I'd like your question. What was your question? Yeah, decks and pergolas. Yeah. Oh yes, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. You get your and yeah. If you've got yeah. kind of improved, we've got commercial property. Yeah, you could do TIs then. Yeah. We also have um, uh, light tractor work, uh, trenching, backhoe, the whole nine yards. So what was that? You can do heavy tractor work. Yeah, if you can do heavy tractor yeah. work, then that's more than yeah. I have backhoes. Yes, yeah. <laughs> backhoe, box scraper, front loader. The river. Sweet. Fresh yeah. Awesome. Oh, good. And we also do trash haul outs too. So if you, if you have issues with a property, a rental property, or something like that, and you need it cleaned out, we'll come in. Okay. So just awesome. about everything. Good. Sounds good. Bruce, since you spoke up, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Bruce Bacon, advanced. Design and development. I'm an MLS broker. I'm also an A and B contractor. Do some design build. I have trouble keeping guys on staff, so uh, I'm always looking for some subs. Awesome. All right, we're going to come to you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my name is Alex. Uh, I own a company called Reno Area Home Buyers. My partner Wes. Uh, we do flipping and wholesaling here in Reno. Uh, in surrounding areas. So, been at it for about two and a half years, done probably 45 or 50 deals now. Um, so, yeah, always looking for more deals to buy and more money to buy them with, more contractors. Um, so, yeah, if you have uh, any deals or any private lending, let me know afterwards. You know, we can work together. Um, I guess that's it. Awesome. Do you guys have a buyer's list for your wholesale deal? Um, yeah, but I don't really use it that often. We kind of just go to the same few buyers, but yeah. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Hey, my name's Greg. Um, so I, I moved to Genoa some time ago. Okay. About uh, this year, seven months ago. So uh, I, wanna, I do want to learn about the area and looking to invest. Um, I kind of want to take a slow to learn the area first. The Reno Stocks area. Um, I do have a property in California, which uh, down the LA area, so, which I did come from. That's where I came from, California. Awesome. To Nevada, for obviously financial reasons. That never happens. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, welcome. Thank you. You've been here before, though, right? I've been virtual. You've been virtual. Not, not, it's my first visit. Okay. Yeah. All right, camera's on you, Mitch. I'm Mitch Reward. <laughs> I buy homes, small single family, and small multi family. Awesome. I don't know if it'll bring back to here. Is that good? Yeah, we got it. I think we can move it up just a little bit. Um, Zoom. Oh, oh, this is our speaker. This is our speaker. He'll, he'll come up and he'll tell us who he is. This is my brother, Joe. Oh, so he's gonna he's gonna show us a, a project that he just finished and that kind of thing. No, <laughs> he'll introduce himself in a few minutes. Um, so the market. Um, I heard some of you guys talking about the market. Um, any any ideas? Any comments about what's going on in the market or any questions? Yes. Uh, as for the uh, RGJ article, oh, you must uh, yeah, and I think uh, some of your information may be. Uh, from this article, or this article may be based upon uh, your yes. realtor information uh, by uh, Jason Hidalgo, uh, who seems to be a rather sharp individual, incidentally. Uh, I'm not sure that uh, he's uh, uh, very attuned to capitalism, but uh, he shows uh, that uh, the existing single-family home in Reno reached 
$469,000 in August, according to the Reno Sparks Association of Realtors. So uh, that Jesus. is a median price. And I noticed that, Ginger, you've got uh, 40, 644 there. Uh, pardon me. Uh, you've got... Um, so uh, the market report that you guys have in front of you is to date. So those were actually printed. Yeah, 444 and I, nine. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Which was on the, yeah. the previous screen that we have right here. Mm -hmm. So 444.9. Mm -hmm. um, did you have any comments to make about that or I any was, questions? I was or? just wondering about the, uh, the discrepancy uh, between your number that you got on the board and uh, the one that's uh, in uh, Jason Hidalgo's. Maybe his is, is wrong. You're could, his be from, could his be from the previous month? What, when no. was this posted? No, it's for August. For August? Okay. Yeah. I don't know, this is straight from the Reno Sparks Association. So okay. sometimes these numbers can be skewed because they might get report, I don't know. But I mean, it's pretty close, right? So um, this is actually, we're, we're at an all time high for the median price point. And we're seeing a lot more million dollar homes in our, in our categories, which is pulling that price Excuse up. However, medium. things are selling for more. True. So we have, we're at, Let's see, last month we were at 60% of our inventory. So there's not a lot of homes. So if you're gonna sell a home, now's the time to sell it. Because we're seeing a lot of bidding wars. Um, I have this at coming soon. I've already received about 20 calls on it. And I'm like, no, you can't see it. You can't see it. You can't see it till Saturday. So um, that's the kind of market we're in right now. So if you wanna sell something for top dollar or more than what the market value is, are you, are you guys seeing the same thing? I know you guys, no, Dylan, different type of real estate. With 20 offers in, right? I'm not offers. People want to see the property. If I was interested in that property, I would write her off. Yes. And you get in front of the crowd, and, and it's always subject to inspection. Sure. You can so even write it subject to viewing. Yeah, and subject I'll, to viewing, but I, it, it puts you in front of everybody, and she's got something in writing rather than somebody telling her, right. yeah, I'm going to make an offer. I think a lot of people with this new, we have, so this is new for us, this coming soon. That was really used to be our pocket listings for a lot of agents. So um, I've actually, two out of the last three listings I've had, we did coming soon and we were in contract before, before it was technically on the market because people write an offer contingent upon viewing and we have to make it active at that point. So there is a disadvantage for the seller, but those are locked in, we're closing in the next couple of weeks on both of those. Um, so it's to your advantage that you either as a self-represented investor say, well, I wanna put an offer in, you know, with your contingencies, you still have inspections, you still have several contingencies that a buyer has for your due diligence. So don't be afraid to put an offer just cause it's a coming soon. I think a lot of people don't realize that, so. Um, and then if you have a realtor that, that's representing you, make sure that they're aware of it because some of them, they're not, they don't know. They think they have to wait. So um, to your benefit to be in this meeting and have John speak up and, and know that. Um, so the market right now, we are at about a little over 70% of our inventory of what we had last year, the same time of year. What I'm seeing, and this, you guys can all, you know, disagree, agree, or expand. Um, what I'm seeing is a lot of people are, didn't buy in the April, March time when we have our peak. So everything kind of got shifted. And now people are in that mode of, I have to buy before I can't buy. Or they're taking advantage of the low interest rates. Um, I, I do think that right now is where our peak is. It kind of got shifted. So, um, and there's still buyers coming into the area. There's still businesses coming in. And I think a lot of people are running from California. I've had a lot of clients say, we're running from California. I'm like, okay. So um, for different reasons, we still are a huge benefit here. We have tax advantages. Um, our, is that, you read an article in, in did you want to share that? Later. What the article's about? Okay. <laughs> so it's still a huge, yeah, John. Speaking of running from California, um, there's a clip that I saw from you Paul. And the price for, oh, is that it? Okay, and, and it just, the prices are, if you're going from, I forgot, <laughs> San Francisco to, to uh, Phoenix, your, um, your price is 
10 times higher than if you're going from Phoenix to San Francisco. Yes. For the same year. <laughs> um, they'll actually pay you to drive that Uvalde back they to will. San Francisco. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. So That's it's funny. funny. But, so it tells you which way people are moving. Yeah. So I've had people, yeah, I, a lot of Californians are moving here um, for obvious reasons. Some of them, it's because of how the government handled COVID. So everyone's got their different reasons. But we still have really great tax benefits. Our, um, our taxes, our home taxes are still really, really low, um, unless that gets changed by the next people that come into office. Um, anyone else have a question about the market? So I'll get out of the way. So don't be weirded out by that number, but that's how many new listings we came in with, um, how many we sold. That doesn't mean that that's, this is from the previous month. It just means that we had probably less inventory. Um, days to contract, 36, and that's really, that's for all of Reno. We just have Reno, Reno Sparks and certain pockets of Reno Sparks, it's like within a day. So, so days to contract for some people who don't know me. Oh, sure. From the time you list it until it's under contract, average time is, is a month. Right. Which is really low. That's extremely low. So we're in a, a strong, strong seller's market. Um, what's going to happen next year? I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball. All the experts are saying that we're going to have an, a shift in the market. Um, how big of a shift will that look like? I don't know. I really don't know because we're supposed to have the shift this year. Right? They kept saying, oh, it's going to happen in 2020. So now it's pushed off to 2021. Um, any comments, any questions, any discussions you guys want to bring up? Okay. So without further ado, oh, yes. Sorry, so the inventory just seems like it's always it's just picking up to catch up. There's no chance that that's going to catch up. You just can't build them fast enough to get the land in. Right. So, okay. So the price of land and the price to build has, has drastically went up for our area. So it's very expensive to build right now. So, um, you're seeing a lot of apartment buildings going up, right? So the apartment buildings are supposed to help create that balance, but there still, has anyone heard the new number? I think there's still about two and a half years, maybe three years from being supposedly caught up. Has anyone heard a different number? That's the last number I heard from someone from the building. Rates and all these new are oh yeah, before they're even before they're even yeah completed, they're all filled. Yeah. So and yeah, so vacant vacancy rates low. Great for us investors, right? So um, what happens to rents? Rents get you know because of the demand, rents go up. So that's really good for us. Anyone else? Yes. Uh, so you had mentioned Fernley and, and Fallon. Um, we had that presenter, I don't know, six, eight months ago now, uh, uh, that was talking about all the money and stuff that was going into that area. Has there been any more discussion uh, mid-COVID as far as, yeah, that's still continuing or? As far as I know, it's still continuing. So it, they may have had a little bit of a blip, just like we all did. But as far as the, my last conversation, it was still happening. So this didn't change anything. So too much money invested, I think. And the plans are supposed to be crazy good. So if you could buy some real estate really close to there. One of my clients almost did. But anyway. Um, so anyone else? Anyone else? Okay, perfect. You guys have, we have time after too, so. Um, okay, so. This is my brother, Joe. Um, you have the same better father. Um, and we actually got into investing um, around the same time in real estate. And so he always knows all the cool gadgets and stuff. So he, he's like, oh, Ginger, look at what I found. And, and I'm like, dang it, I wish I had that like a long time ago. So anyway, he was sharing with me some things yesterday and I asked him to speak for you guys. So anyway, thanks, Joe. Hey, everyone, my name's Joe. Um, I remember my wife and I praying quite a while back that we would hang around people that uh, were doing something bigger than themselves. And when I hang around my sister, she's one of those and the people that she hangs around. So, um, like she said, I was showing her the, the stuff on my dad's kitchen table last night in Reno and Sparks. And uh, 
then walked her out to the car to give her her water because I'm paying her water to stay in her room. <laughs> it's Kagan water, special, special water, uh, magic water. And um, she asked me to come and, and do a spiel. I said, no, I don't want to do it. I got in the house and my wife and daughter said, yeah, you're going to do it. So <laughs> the women in my life. <laughs> so I retired um, in September of 2019, 58 years old. In order to do that, we needed to get some extra cash flow coming in. Uh, this is our home in Livermore. It's 40 miles east of San Francisco, so on the other side of the bay. Still considered the San Francisco Bay Area. If you ever drive that way down 580, it's where the windmills are. Uh, it's 1,962 square feet. And we, the company that I left gave me a nice uh, parting gift. And so I thought I'd invest it instead of spending it and we built out this garage. So this, we put the, that's, that used to be a garage basically right there. Um, we put in some nice lamps there uh, um, just to class it up. They're uh, LEDs, so I hopefully never have to change them again and they're light sensors so they come on at night. Um, this is the side of the house there. That's, that's the door of the, um, for the, the tenant and we put a, a, a key thing there because I didn't want to have to deal with keys. We gave her a little mailbox with the key also but all the mail um, will come into the main room. I gave her a little seating area out there. Uh, as you walk in the door, um, my wife and I designed it. Um, bought a little piece of software that Ginger asked me to show you. Uh, that's looking from the front door out the back. Then we put a barn door there. Uh, there's a, we put a little bedroom in there because as I was reading, um, as you collect rents, if you have a, a studio versus a one bedroom, it's like a $300 difference in our area. So I, got, I got, so I got to figure out how to get in this 400 square feet, another bedroom or call it a bedroom legally, just to get that other $300 in my pocket. So we, I bought that piece of software to pick because I was trying to figure out how to show the contractor, how to communicate to everyone what the picture was in my mind. So that $99 piece of software helped me out. This was a duplex room, Trey? No, um, now it's called, uh, I'm not sure, we call two it- Two units? It's two units, yeah. What and is it? It's called an ADU in, in the county, uh, accessory dwelling unit. It used to be called the mother-in-law's uh, thing. Oh, no, I'm talking about the software. Oh, okay. Software was $99. I'll show it to you in a minute. Uh, it showed, it, it, it's a software, well, I'll, I'll get there. Um, yeah, so it's a full blown kitchen. Um, that's the front door there. We put a lighting um, in the upper there so it wouldn't feel like it's a cave. Uh, it's all LED lighting. I have solar on the roof, so I'm not gonna be paying anything out really extra in electricity. The stove's electric, I put 220. The washer and dryer that we squeaked in the bathroom, also 220. So our current uh, tenant is a young, um, young woman. She's not going to draw much power unless she likes to take a lot of baths. That's a bedroom. Uh, instead of we're trying to get every piece of of the area used up well, so instead of putting a full blown closet with doors. I just bought a closet kit, put it together, it took me a couple of days. It wasn't real fun, but it, it got in there. Um, so it's an open closet, basically. There's a first view of the bathroom. More LED lighting. We put a soaker tub because, I don't know, because It'd be a good idea. We put those bars in there just to help people in and out. That's where most of the accidents that I read occur. Um, if you like to take baths, you know, you like to have it deep. Um, we put these, uh, instead of putting tile, because tile, we have tile in the house and cleaning it, it's not fun. We have glass doors in the house, cleaning those glass doors is not fun. So I didn't want to have any of that cleaning issue. So this, I don't know what this material is, but they come out and put it in in one day. Real easy to clean. 
Another picture of the bathroom. Bedroom. We kind of went overboard on the on the cost um, for the for the bedding and the beds and stuff. The actual cost to build was 160 square foot. So it cost us 64k to build the unit. Another 5,000 in bedding and furniture and stuff, which is pretty good. We did it because the contractor is my friend, and he he worked all his stuff. I was putting out cash for some some of the guys. They were all licensed professionals, but they were doing side side work. Because um, we have in Livermore, they make you do um, fire sprinklers. If there's existing fire, anything else you build has to continue with it. So we had to move a few fire sprinklers. Um, fortunately, our inspector um, was more concerned about the electrical than the other stuff. So I learned being in the medical industry, when the inspector comes in, you don't talk to talk to him much. You make sure he's happy, and but you don't give him any any fodder to look at. You know? And so I, I was telling my contractor, shh, shh, come on, brother. you're giving him too much. And he starts looking at another area where he has no expertise. So finally, he got the lead, and uh, we got we got it signed. It took three months. Um, to do it and it happened we just got back from South Africa my wife and I on a missions trip and right when the COVID hit um, March 17th we were flying out of South Africa and it was crazy there um, you know, people were in the airport storming the airport without a ticket trying to get a ticket in line um, but we made it back no toilet paper for a week but we made it back. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, there's that closet. <clears throat> My barn door was a, um, a heavy monster. Couldn't get the contractor to put it in. It was on the back end of things. Made me go buy another one because he didn't like the multiple pieces. Um, so um, he was a friend of mine. Um, I, I, we learned some lessons on hiring a friend. <laughs> <laughs> and we're still friends. We still have meals to go. But he really did a good job on the kitchen there. The flooring is uh, a new vinyl, 100% uh, uh, waterproof, basically. Uh, since it's on a cement floor, we put extra padding so you don't feel like you're standing on cement. Uh, we stuck one of those. That's actually in the bathroom. That door there is actually to our main house. And uh, yeah, it's right in the, in the corner of the bathroom. Yeah. So was this a garage or something? Yes, sir. Yes. <clears throat> the cost to build an external one or an attached the price went from 160 to over $260 a square foot. So this was our best bet to get up and running. Um, I just learned recently, though, that uh, that they will allow us to build another unit on the on the same property, but it has to be external or attached. So we're looking into that. That's where this on software helps me make some decisions. That's his beautiful wife. <laughs> your, uh, is that your mind? Yeah. Can you put that back there? Sure. I come from an engineering background. Too quick. Professional home design. What's on there? Virtual architect. That's perfect. Is that good enough? It has it right on the corner of the virtual architect. How many square feet in your rental unit in the garage? 400. Oh, four. Two car garage. So it's we amazing. did a lot of extra uh, um, for privacy, for sound. Uh, privacy is a two way street. So we put in the um, 5 8 sheet rock and we put in the soundproof clips on the ceiling. Uh, we did also did it on the wall. 5 8 uh, doubled up all, all around. Um, there's a lot of noise in the street. We live on a 
I'm on a real busy street, but people, a lot of foot traffic, so you can hear them. So we purchased the windows that uh, deaden the sound, and we also purchased um, uh, these curtains that uh, bring down the lighting, um, blackout, reduce, uh, quench the sound, and also the heat. So we did some things for, for privacy, but also for that. One thing I learned is that um, I hired a, the architect, who was a friend of mine, but to also hire an architect that has an engineering piece to it, whether it's, it's his partner or some piece, because his initial design really um, it didn't work. Um, we had a, the, the gas, the PG&E gas sign that, um, that was coming into the house. We wanted to move the door close to it. There's rules about three feet space. I had a window designed above it. It has to be eight feet above it. So all that was blown out because he didn't get it. Um, but this is the software. Um, there's menu picks. You can bring in furniture. You can uh, do different things like that. I left the top view. That's how we could kind of sink um, in the bathroom here. Uh, we bought a small refrigerator. We used the storage on top of the refrigerator to build another cabinet. And we put the, um, the washer dryer back. I just want to show you two or three of them, the 3D renderings. This is a view from sitting on the bed, looking out through the barn door. <coughs> Ginger and I, about 10 years ago, and she asked me to come up here to Reno to an um, investment seminar. Mm -hmm. And um, they put on the screen five things that, um, that you do wrong. Now, I'd already bought an investment in South Carolina. I bought a little um, townhome, and I was bleeding money. So they put it on the screen, the five things you do wrong as a junior investor. And I had done all five. <laughs> <laughs> And um, so I, I determined to learn my lesson. So I called Ginger up and I said, we're going to do this again. And she recommended um, taking a property management class. Because in truth, it's a property, it's a people management class. Mm -hmm. um, so I put together a nice lease. I put things in there like I don't want open flames. And, and uh, in the class, they told us not to have the the signing of the lease the same day they move in, kind of arrange the walk through before, since so they're not all, they're going to be all uh, head noise on the, on the move in. Um, and not to hand them the keys until you get the check. That's not true. That's not true. What's nice about the, about the youth now is that uh, I asked them, well, what's the best way? Zell? 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 Zell, Zell is one. And whatever they PayPal, like, to use, and yeah, whatever use, they communicate, they have that language. And, um, so we did that. We bring in, actually bring in a young lady who she's we're charging her sixteen hundred dollars a month. We've had other people come by and said, "Hey, Joe, I would have gave you two thousand a month." That's just the going rate right out there. Mm -hmm. um, we live next door to um, a big um, Liberal Livermore Labs, um, and so. All the interns blow through there three months out of the year. So if I just wanted to have someone for three months, uh, uh, someone who would pay without an issue, they're typically not party animals. Uh, we, I, they're easy to rent to. We have a few hospitals, and they they have um, nurses and, and doctors that come through and will rent, and not even be there half the time. Who do you have for a tenant now? And uh, can you tell us about your experience with that tenant? Yeah, so far, so she just, we just finished it um, the last month. So she just moved in and that's all she's done is she moved in. She's still at her other place doing whatever. She works in town, so it saved her um, a commute. So I honestly haven't seen her yet. I'm not really, she's a friend of the family and uh, we know her mom. Um, so I, I, I have no issues yet, but in the lease, it was, it was quite, that's what was nice about the course. Uh, Ginger warned me that California has their own set of laws, so you got to get those forms, talk to those type of trainings, and make sure. So a $200 course could probably save me 
I'm hoping thousands in the future, not having to learn those lessons. I want to show you another piece of software. And you also, you mentioned to me last night that you have run a month to month, right? Yeah, I'm so month to month yeah. Because of the laws in California being so stringent as yeah. far as getting people out, the month to month's a lot more. It was just, different. as I read through it, if you go a year at least, there were just more issues around, um, around when the transaction happens, when, when they move out or when they kick them out. But, and that's one thing, um, my wife and I are pastors, and so when we had the rental that was back east, it was just no fun evicting people. You know, you want to turn it into a ministry, you want, but it's a business deal. It was no fun talking with the sheriff on, on the phone as he's helping us. You know, and you don't want that in the news. Pastor evicts a uh, young woman <laughs> and a baby. It's just not a good deal. But, um, she wanted me to show you this other piece of software. This one's also. Um, about a hundred dollars, and we used it for the landscaping because the other tools didn't have the, the same stuff. And what was nice about this one? So let's do it. After you get it built, which is the hard part, um, it has a feature where you can walk through it virtually. I'm in the back right now. It's very small. How large is your lot? Um, I don't know the exact number. I know the house is 1,962 square feet. Um, let me show you the top for reference. This is the part of the house. This is the garage where we kept the unit. We're considering building another ADU attached on the side here. Can, can you put elevations in the um, I don't know. Livermore, um, they said that it was good that I got in 2019 because the rules around building ADUs have dramatically changed for that county. Um, Costs went in half, the permits went in half. They're, they're really on it. They're trying to get more, as much housing as they can. So they went from 30,000 to 15? Say again? I said, did they go from 30,000 to 15? It, no, it only cost us, yeah. Um, this, 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 uh, and I collected all the numbers. It, my memory escapes. I don't think we paid more than 3,000 in permits to build an ADU. It may have been more if it was oh, so if you had an existing house. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So this is the side. We're thinking about putting this pergola here. This is south facing, facing, so it gets a lot of heat. This is the room where the um, that unit is. Uh, we're going to put in these uh, planter boxes my wife would like. We have some of these maple trees. We want to put in some more. The software will simulate time of day. You know, it'll add birds and sound and butterflies. I already have this 10 by 12 unit, this 12 by shed. So we're also put in the, I don't know what it's called, a la carte. So she, uh, our tenant can rent this to put storage, 10 by 10, I'm going to charge her 100 bucks. By law, I don't need to have a parking spot for her. She's going to park on the street. But if I gave her one of my stalls, um, I, would, I offered it for 20 bucks a month. Uh, what else? Um, for internet, it cost me 10 bucks to add another part of the speed. I'd charge her 20 bucks. Um, for the TV, um, the cable, cost me another 10 bucks to add another box. I'd charge her 20 bucks just to, to build the get the price up there so that I can gain as much out of it as I could. Um, I'm in the process now of building this redwood deck. This um, pavilion is already there. It's a 15 by 20 pavilion. Um, the nice thing about this tool, I wanted, my wife thinks aesthetically, how's it gonna look? I do too, but I think more functionally. I wanted to put another ADU right in the back here 
And she, she wouldn't have it. She goes, no, you're going to block everything. She wanted this green area, sitting area. And I'm glad she did. Um, so after the deck, that's going to be the next uh, project. Um, but I'm still looking into the cost of building the, the next ADU on the side here. And I have, we'll have a little porch, seating area. What it helped me do also is, are we okay on time? Mm -hmm. um, see what, what another ADD would look like back there. I come out my back door, this kind of consumes the whole backyard here, as opposed to the other pictures with the fountain and the areas. So, so it gets some arguments out of the way, if nothing else, for 99 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's about it. Cool. Does anyone have any questions? So, how do you get the in your house? You have to put it in. There's two. Photo. No, so it's not an exact picture. It's like a, just a, a rendering. Uh -huh. of, you put in the siding, whether it's stucco, and it'll add it. You put in the type of roof, brick, tile. Yeah. Question. Uh, is your tenant, do they have access to that common area in the back, which is actually your patio and that type of stuff? No, so I put in the lease, and she has no access to the main home. Or anything, but um, this side area here. Can you see that? Yes. So I've given her this this access right here right now, um, and she's storing. She's going to store a jet ski. I, I have a motorcycle right there. I'll move it if she needs to. And then inside the lease, I was specific that I need this area to be kept clean and orderly, and that I need a, a walk path from here to the gate. And that's about all she has. So what's a 1,900 square foot home in Livermore worth? Um, without the, I don't know how much it is with the unit, but Zillow said it was 888,000. And that was just a, a recent spike, like you guys are having here. There's a mass exodus of San Francisco, actually. And that was in the paper. It was um, out of 3,200 storefront owners, half of them have left San Francisco. The business just, that was it. And they left. And that means the residents left and everything, their apartment and their house. So there's a huge, there's a lot of property available right now. It's a lot of vacancy. Mm. People are literally running out of that city. They've legalized, well, for several years, they were, they've given out syringes. Um, the homeless population, and instead of managing it, it's just they can camp out in your, in your front door and you can't do much. The worst thing they did recently is they decriminalized um, Petty theft or theft. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, it doesn't, it's not theft until it, they get a ticket if it's less than $900. So, up to $900, they just get a ticket. So, they're just raping the, the store owners. They go into a Walmart or a Walgreens there and just pack up, leave. As long as it's less than $900, they just get a ticket. Yeah. So, the, the management there's they really broke the city. Mm -hmm. yeah, none of those guys will be there next week. Next week. I have a question for you, Joe. Will, will you refinance this property now that you guys complete? I tried um, since I retired and I did an early retirement. Um, I had trouble. Just because your income now? Yeah, I can prove the income. I have decent, um, I don't have debt. Mm. Um, the thing was, since Fannie Mae is the only one doing all, the, mm. all these low interest loans. Fannie Mae doesn't recognize the IRA 55 rule, which 
means that if you're 55, you can begin to draw on your 401k and your IRAs for that. That's the way I see that's partly the way I see it. So they're not including that as income. Right. They don't know. So one federal federal agency doesn't agree with that. No, I find that hard to believe that one federal agency doesn't <laughs> that never happens. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, like, I, I tried our, yeah. <laughs> so next year I turn 59 and a half and then that goes away. So I can I can try to get there. Okay. Okay. Awesome. All right. Thanks for letting me share. Well, thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Um so perfect. Um without further ado, we will be back next month. Same time, third Wednesday of every month. We start at six o'clock. Um, if anyone has any ideas for speakers or they know someone that they think would be amazing, um, we currently are actively looking for someone for next month. Anyway, so, um, and any of you guys that have any ideas, I'm talking to the camera just in case you're wondering. Oh, sure. um, <laughs> one's like, who's she talking to? Um, so if any of you guys have any ideas, send them, text them, put them on the chat. Um, and that's it. So you guys are welcome to stick around, exchange cards. I know a couple of people you wanted to get um, contractors cards. And um, yeah, go ahead and network. And we got about, let's say about 20, 25 minutes. If that's okay, if that's enough time. Perfect. All right, thanks guys. Thanks for coming. Thank